Hello everyone and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5 and in this episode I'm going to combine my usual activities with a rendezvous tutorial so we'll learn how to meet up with various targets in in space and especially of course in space near Kerbin Sphere of Influence first so that's my plan, and my plan is also to make use, finally, of Lubas Kerman, who's been hanging out in, in low Kerman orbit for ages now. He was uh, asteroid defense mission number two, and he was supposed to just hold station until an asteroid uh, came around, and uh, he would try and meet up with it. But it turns out that we decided we needed a lot more juice than he had to spare. So what he's going to end up doing is become uh, a little uh, survey mission out to... Well, I don't think we should send him out to here because this, this uh, one out here probably needs to be brought in. I think uh, we need to have something with a lot more juice to push that into a better orbit. So how about we, we target this one? IHY504 and we'll, we'll have him hang out there for a little while and maybe even leave his little capsule there we'll have somebody else pick him up so that we can rename that asteroid permanently okay so we've targeted the so this is the first type of uh, rendezvous right uh, object already in orbit needs to meet up with object in space and their inclinations are different so already this situation is sort of borked uh, I mean it's not the best possible situation in this case the best thing to do would be to boost first and then change inclination after so we're going to boost to a slightly different orbit not quite uh, all the way up to that one and that's because we still want to be able to catch up with it but then we'll be able to do a much cheaper... Uh, well, let, let's plot both, actually, just to see. Let's say we were to do the inclination change here. And this is the inclination. And we need to match up with the orbit of our target, of course. And here we go. How much did it cost? A <laughs> thousand... 461. Well, that's not good, is it? Uh, was there any way of doing that cheaper? Let's just see a slight, a slight change. Yeah, we can see that it's already taking up too much. And there's no... Uh, it is, it's possible that Lewis Kerman has, has enough. But it's more likely that he doesn't. So, let's boost up first. And then out here adjust the inclination now we could do both at the same time and there is an argument that that might be cheaper so we'll take a look at that but uh, here we have a rendezvous and it will the boost will cost uh, 417 and this maneuver will cost 700 ish so we're talking about uh, more than 300 meters per second less. I think we could probably fine-tune this a bit. I'm just taking a look at where the intersect intersection points are. So you can see that if we do this, we have an intersection point here that is ahead of our target. And uh, here again, we're way ahead of our target. So next time around, we should come up behind it, right? So that's what I'm figuring. We're still going to be quite different from our target, though. I don't know if I want to be this far off. Hmm. Let's try the other option. Let's say that we plot both at the same time. So we boost and do an inclination change. Ah, well, maybe we could get something interesting here. Hold on. 
It's still co costing more, as you can see, but maybe if it saves us the trouble of making a huge burn when we get there. See, the bigger the difference between your orbit and the target's orbit, the more you're going to have to burn when you get there. So, we're going to try and minimize that somewhat. Okay, I'm going to just boost out and then do the plane change. I'm not convinced that I'm getting enough benefit otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to actually try for a tangency here. You can see here that it's touching its orbit here. And then I'm going to adjust the inclination at that tangency. Tangency, place where it touches the other orbit. Okay, let's see how much this is. Looks like uh, combined it's about a thousand. I think that's probably the best way to go. But uh, there's no problem with trying to plot the next part of it. Okay. So let me explain what I did. I've uh, decided to plot a third maneuver node to try and get this intersect point. And let me tweak that a little bit. So after we've uh, adjusted the inclination, we can try and find this sort of intersect point just by sliding this, this around. You can see here. Just slide it to a location where the two arrows meet. And oh, well, that's fine. I'll just leave it at that. 2.8 kilometers. Can't argue with that. Um, and that's another 183 meters per second. So, so far the maneuvers we've plotted to get within 2.8 kilometers is less than the one that we would have done if we tried to adjust the inclination and burn out at the same time. Okay, so we're going to go for these three maneuvers and have Lubas Kerman meet up with that asteroid. Okay. Now, I've just passed the first maneuver node, so I'm already off. So Lewis Curran will hang out uh, at the orbit, uh, at the asteroid, when it gets into low Kerbin orbit, and... And then see if we can do more science there. Okay, let's see. 52.3 now. I won't adjust that just yet. We'll do everything else first. Certainly, well, I guess our inclination could do with some tweaking. So this was the inclination adjustment. Just in general, the policy is boosts are more efficient closer to Kerbin. Inclination changes more efficient away from Kerbin. Uh, if at all possible, doing them in combination uh, can help. But uh, sometimes it depends. You'll actually have to do the math if you want to figure out some situations. Now I'm just gonna pick. Uh, I just always pick the ascending or descending node to figure out where I want to try and make the rendezvous at. So this this is uh, excessive because our orbit is going to be sort of larger than our targets. And I don't want to go too far on that. So now we have to try and tweak with the radial one. We uh, tweaking with the radial one and turning like this is not substantially different. So you could untweak with the radial one and just find a better position to get the encounter. Though that can sometimes lead to really weird orbits. But yeah, if uh, you can just slide the encounter instead of using the radial ones. Okay, 6.3 should be alright, I guess. The trouble with sliding the encounter, though, is you can't uh, tweak it precisely with the uh, scroll wheel. So my general flow was using the greenish yellow ones first, then the pink ones, and then finally the third burn was with the radial or just sliding it around like this to get that encounter right there. 
And 23 minutes, 147 meters per second, shouldn't be too big a deal. Gotta be a little bit more delicate with this one since we're going to end up trying to get very close to the target. Okay, that's as close as we're gonna get. So, six kilometers, there we are. And uh, below 10 is good. Below 2 is very good. So, definitely target below 10. Uh, the reason being that uh, otherwise you'll have trouble making the approach because the accelerations between you and the target will be the, uh, too different and that will make uh, making the approach a little bit more tedious if it's more than 10 kilometers away. So uh, 2 kilometers makes it real easy. Alright, uh, I guess just so that I know when it is, I'm going to add maneuver here. I'm not going to try and figure out exactly what I need to do to match with the target. I'm just going to click target here. And I have the maneuver plotted, so we'll wait till we get there. Okay, we're about uh, four, mi uh, 4 minutes away from the target, and we can see that we've got a lot of burning to do in order to match with the target. So I'm going to get rid of this maneuver now. And on the nav ball, uh, now that we've switched to target, I need to point at the retrograde marker, or the negative relative velocity marker in this case, because retrograde is only to do with orbits, not with the relative velocity between you and the target. So, negative relative velocity. I want to see how far away we are from the target right now, if possible. Uh, distance still... well, we're closing pretty quickly. Alright. If you do this too soon, you'll see that the separation increases. And we don't want that to increase too much. And in this case, even I'll I'll stop it for now. I'll wait till we get a little bit closer. Okay, of course, if it stops showing me where I am, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, did I mess up the inclination? Yeah, I might have uh, ended up a little bit more inclined than I should. Let me try and point in this direction to fix that. Okay, from here on out, I gather that the map is not going to help us out too much. Just going to have a token amount of difference with the target. I'm going to wait out here until the target comes within that 10 kilometer range. And just wait until the numbers stop ticking down. Okay, that looks about right. Going to stop going in this direction. Or close enough. And point towards the target with the round pink marker. And travel at a maximum velocity around the number of kilometers that we are at. Okay, around one kilometer even, but uh, this time I went for more like 400, uh, 400 meters. We get rid of any more of the relative velocity and then try and aim a little bit more properly. Here, if it's an asteroid, it's target center of mass. On the, the claw and control from the claw. Uh, actually, I don't know if it actually read the control from there. It should be fine. Okay, now the pink marker is the center of mass. And I'm going to now use mop propellant Because we don't need to go too fast. Uh, about 0.5 is fine. 
go as much as one, but if you're within 300 meters, take it slow. Doesn't look like a particularly smooth spot for the target center of mass. Gonna readjust here, point again at the pink marker, which we've deviated from. RCS pressing J to get the prograde or positive relative velocity marker in line with the target. And finally, right about here, RCS, slow down a bit. Make sure to get that back in line, but it'll be jittery now. Come on, Lubus Kerman. I don't think our solar panels should have any problem. Just trying to take a look at that. Gonna get that marker lined up again. It's sort of a weird spot we've picked out here. Will it actually claw? I don't know, it doesn't seem like the right kind of surface for it to claw. Going to move it forward. Okay, well this is... oh, there we go. Alright. Well, a little bit off from the target center of mass but we're not actually going to push it around right now we want to follow along with it until it gets to low Kerbin orbit and then we're going to do some further experiments okay Luas time for your long-awaited encounter with an asteroid where are you gonna pop out from just so I don't uh, mess up too much here all right Oh, upside down. Very handy. Okay. And just... Oh, right. Uh, probably going forward a bit, if you can. Can you... Yeah, take the sample. Okay, so while in space near Kerbin. Okay, keep that data. Um, God, which one do we have this be? Is it Higgs or was it something else? I'm gonna name it Higgs anyway. Um, Alright, you're drifting away now. Uh, do you have lights? No. Why don't you have lights? You should have lights. Oh, don't get bumped by the solar panel. Okay, forward. <sighs> really? Okay, so we've got the sample. Oh, I think we're inside, yeah. Okay, so sample from the asteroid. Uh, crew report? Not really helpful. Uh, we've renamed the asteroid. We've targeted the center of mass. Everything is good. Alright, uh, yeah, let's let uh, Lubas hang out here for a little bit. I've got another mission that I wanted to do. We're going to go with the AD5 this time, but I'm going to make some modifications. Um, not there. Well, actually, that might not be such a bad thing. Uh, yeah, right there is actually okay. And what I want to do is add a facility to dock. And so I'm going to need a decoupler on this side. Oh, well, I guess I could use just a docking port. And we're going to have another docking port. 
But perhaps not just this. Perhaps we should also have a a control unit. Mm, that's too small. That's too small. Should we put? I don't know if we should put uh, parachutes on this and make it an emergency. Well, why would you want need to emergency escape from an asteroid? Honestly. No, I think this will do. Now I need to put some struts on this just for my aesthetic sanity. Not the most sane looking thing at all. Oh, it could be worse. Okay. So that will give us some additional facilities for the asteroid we're going to meet up with. Let's take this out to the launch pad. Oh, uh, let's pick our crew member. James. Uh, James, are you in the right lander can? I hope so. Okay, so here's James on the launch pad, but to make a rendezvous with an arbitrary target, so in this case it'll be very arbitrary, it'll be, oh, is that a, which one is that? Oh, I guess that's just one that's going to be passing by and we ignored because it was going to pass by. So yeah, it's just going to just gonna go away. That's fine. Uh, so that's not the one we're interested in. It's this one. This one in a very wow. There's a lot of these guys here. Hold on. Okay, that's that's gonna swing by and not hit us. God, lots of near misses. Okay. So uh, yep, uh, this one is the one that we're going after because uh, we've we've already got something on there. Uh, but we didn't actually send a Kerbal, I think. So we're going to send a Kerbal and also put it in a better orbit than where it is right now. However, step one to meeting up with a target like this is to make sure that the KSC is under its orbit. So we've lined up its orbit like this. And we just... Uh, we want the orbit to be cutting through the center of the planet, if possible. Make sure it's sort of lined up like that. Okay, tough to cite this, but if you're going to do this without a jab, you just have to do the best you can. Now, we also have to figure out which way it's uh, rotating in. Okay, it seems to be going up that way, and so it's got to be going up and then down. So, we passed it, darn it. Uh, okay, we'll go this way then. So, I think we need to, so we'll be going north in this direction. If I'm wrong, that's going to be quite costly. Okay, so here, right around here, we seem to be reasonably in line with its orbit. Now, we estimate what heading we need to get to. So, if it was straight up and down, it'd be 0. If it was straight side to side, this would be 90. This would be 270. This would be 180. So, we're between 0 and 90. And we're probably around half of 45. So, I'd say 22. Nighttime launch, James Kerman. Throttle is up. Throttle. Oh, I'm time warping. Throttle is up now, yes. SCS on. Okay, I think we're uh, ready to go. can check my assumption right now. Okay, 66.2. So, because we are sort of in a trajectory already, because of the planet's rotation, we are already going 90. And so, when I checked the little marker, it said that we were 66.2 degrees off. 
So that's another indication. So if you can't quite get a sense of what angle it should be, you just take 90, subtract the 66.2, assuming that's the correct direction. And uh, in that case, we've got uh, about 24, 24 degrees. Actually, while we're waiting for this to get to altitude, I want to take a look at Duna. We have to make uh, missions to Duna soon. And I don't want this mission to take so long that Duna passes by the optimum point. And I guess uh, when we do, do the Duna transfer, I will... I will explain planetary transfers. I suppose that's reasonable. James does not look particularly happy, but we're starting our gravity turn. Okay, pretty good trajectory this time, and we're hoping for a nice separation here. That's what I'm waiting for. And we're slowly adjusting our inclination to the target. Okay, boost the separation. Very good. Uh, I've still got a six degree discrepancy. And that's largely because of the difference. Uh, so I didn't launch at quite the right time. I wasn't quite under the orbit of the target. And so that's why I've got that problem. So I'm just burning. Uh, I'm continuing continuing to burn because there's no point in me getting into a near uh, low curve in orbit. I'm just letting the burn continue. And I guess I can stop it right around now. The So we still need to do an inclination adjustment and I'll do one here and uh, the reason why we might as well do it here is because it will also boost our orbit a little bit. Hopefully. Not much. Just a 20. So we'll also do a uh, boost up there too. Can't quite get a good view of... Well, I guess that's pretty good. Both Kerbin and the rocket. Alright, let's go. Okay. That's better. All right, so inclination is adjusted, but we have a long way to go yet. How do we make sure that we meet up with this target? Well, a lot like the way we figure out how to meet up with the moon. We give it a little bit of a lead time. And so we say that it's, uh, let's say that it's going to be over here when we meet up with it. Then we should burn up, burn out from the opposite end not the best place because we'd rather go from our periapsis but let's try this out oh went too far uh, and my scroll wheel got me okay uh, not quite right we want it to be here okay all right so you can see that it's gonna be ahead of us and so we want to turn this Grab this, turn it a little bit there. Ah, we're pretty close to escape velocity here. And here we are still behind it, but not by as much. Seemed like Well, that's a close one. Right now, I don't think taking this, uh, placing the maneuver node is going to 
be able to be accurate enough so I'm going to use the radial adjustment and also try and get the inclination pretty exact the with how close we are to escape velocity though it's a little bit tricky because just a little nudge in the wrong direction and we escape Kerbin's sphere of influence. The close, the, well, the further you are away from the target, the more difficult it is to make fine adjustments and the easier it is to make coarse adjustments. So right now I can't really make any fine adjustments to this. I'll have to wait until we get a little bit closer. Let me finish this burn. And then as we get closer, I'll be able to make uh, better adjustments to our orbit to get a better number on the intersect. Okay, now I have to be a little bit careful. I see that there is a staging issue here. Let's see now. Okay, that should be fine. Let's see what's going on. Okay. Let's try and get that as close as possible. Always dump your maneuver node right at the last bit to see how close you can actually get it. Okay, well that doesn't look very... Oh, wait, I'm not looking at it properly. Aha, okay. Of course, the map will occasionally mess with you. Oh, like there. Okay, well. Let me uh, pull back with RCS here. Not quite what I wanted, but we can make further adjustments. Let's say we add one at this descending node. And again, it's a favorite thing to adjust things at the nodes. And here I'm just trying out whatever sticks. So if uh, using the scroll wheel on the prograde vector works, that's what I'll do. And if it doesn't, if it stops working, I'll pull it back a bit. Oop. Okay, about 140 it looks like. I guess maybe a bit of an inclination adjustment might help. Seventeen, sixteen. I think I'll go with seventeen at this point. From that location, seventeen is pretty good. Oh, and the reason you might want to use one of the nodes, the ascending and descending node, even if your inclination is pretty close, is that uh, while you're tweaking, it might help. I mean, uh, just the fractions of a degree that you can adjust the inclination might help, just as you saw there, without tweaking the inclination at all. I was uh, getting 140 kilometers away, but after tweaking the inclination, I got to 18, as you see. All right, so four hours. Hmm, I should really be getting my solar panels out. Was Were they actually grouped to one? Okay, those were. Alright. And then for the last bit, get out of here. And I'm going to actually use RCS. Just pushing H here. So in the direction of the maneuver node. 
and looks like I'm gonna get 40, 30, 90, now I'm pushing J. Just going with whatever works and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna, yeah, it doesn't like me because I'm getting too close. Okay, let's see how much, oh, and the test. <laughs> Uh, it does this sort of thing. Okay, all right, but I, I think I am actually very close. Um, I don't think uh, we get our CS off. They might not want to admit it, but I think I've got something there. Let's see. It's tough when it doesn't want to show you what's going on. Because the orbits are so slow way out here, our relative velocity with respect to the target is very uh, very low so that's handy a little bit more difficult to catch up sometimes when you're closer can't quite see it looks like 30 kilometers it's pretty far out like I said I even here I want to be 10 and but it, it's just not going to cooperate with me so I'll just have to do it the hard way four hundred kilometers still not close enough to make any adjustments thankfully we don't have that much of a burn so we can get in close before starting to adjust our orbit to match it okay well that's about as close as we're gonna get uh, RCS off and Just get rid of all of the excess velocity. Target should be on this side somewhere. There it is. Actually not excess velocity. We're actually catching up with it. It was going faster than us. just lining it up and from out here the maximum is the number of kilometers so 32 but we don't need to go to that yet it looks like we'll be within one kilometer it says in 34 minutes that's fine I wanna just take a peek at uh, how how Duna is doing yeah I mean that uh, very next thing, next episode, we are launching stuff to Duna. Gotta do that. We are gonna investigate whether these asteroids are coming from Ike, and we need to make that a priority. But let's get this done first. Okay, now once again, we're going to get rid of the relative velocity. Okay, so we're now approaching the target. We could stand to go a little bit faster than this. At the same time, we got a target the center mass. Got arm this. And I'm going to say control from here. We can see our other little probe there. Oh, actually, we've. Uh, oh, yeah, we needed two to push this thing into orbit. It always pays to be cautious when trying to grab an asteroid. I don't think this is James Kerman's first trip out to an asteroid, is it? I'll have to... I really should keep records on the exploits of all my Kerbals, but uh, for some reason I never made a page in a notebook for that. Okay, we are docked. RCS off. Okay, now we haven't had a Kerbal do science around this particular asteroid. Unfortunately, James is going to be coming out on the dark side of this, I think. 
Or oh, right on top there. Okay. EVA. Okay. Take the sample. Keep the data. Rename asteroid. What else did I have? Oh well, uh, let let's just go with scientists. Um, I guess we'll call this Feynman. Mm, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay, James is a lot better at the whole EVA thing. Oh, okay, we're inside the, the asteroid again. All right, uh, I'm not gonna bring uh, James back yet because there's still uh, pushing around. I think we want to push this into a closer orbit, but that uh, might take a little bit longer. You can see that the whole orbit is around eight days long, and that would... Uh, and what I want to do is I not only want to push this closer to the Kerbin, but I also want to take the low, low, uh, a near Kerbin sample. So I want to make sure to do that and then return our two Kerbinots back to, back to Kerbin. But if I try to do that now, I'll totally miss any chance of sending anything over to Duna. And so that's what I'll do next time. So just to uh, recap, first of all, there are, this is just my way of making a rendezvous and you've seen it work twice and so it's what I'm comfortable with. I'm not too, uh, I'm sure there are tweaks that I could make to it that would make it more efficient uh, but it is not bad. It's uh, So let's just recap. First thing if you're launching from the surface you line it up uh, make sure that the KSC is underneath the orbit that you are trying to target and you can, if you choose to, aim at the inclination that the target is in. So, for instance, if we drop this and focus on Kerbin. Oh. Anyway, as I was saying, though we're not with the same craft anymore. Um, so, for instance, let's say I want to rendezvous with this Science Junior Standard here. I would wait until the KSC is here. And then I would just burn north. Or for any other arbitrary target. I would... what the heck is this intersecting with Kerbin? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got an asteroid that's coming in. Oh no. Okay, well, so uh, Duna and whatever this asteroid is. I'll have to make a note of this. Hold on. Piece of paper. Pen. R D U three five four is a problem. Okay, so we'll have to deal with that. But yeah, so uh, launch like that, and after you've launched, that should be uh, pretty simple. You just uh, use the program vector to burn out to the target. Try and time it, sliding the maneuver to. To uh, run the the final rendezvous maneuver, you just slide it along your orbit to try and get the right timing to get as close as possible. Use the scroll wheel to tweak things. Always tweak the prograde retrograde vector first, the yellowish green ones, and then second the inclination, the pinks, and then the third the blue ones. Uh, instead of using the blue ones, you can always just go ahead and um, and relocate the maneuver on your orbit. But uh, there's a limit to how accurate that could be. So those are sort of the ideas. I hope you got the uh, uh, basic thing. I, I didn't really have a chart of things to do uh, for a rendezvous. But uh, if you have any further questions about rendezvous, please feel free to ask. Uh, I am not 
perfect on them by any stretch of the imagination, but at least I do get them done. Uh, in the next episode, I'll look to doing interplanetary transfers, and I guess we'll have to send another mission out to this one, because there's no way I'm going to let that crash into Kerbin. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.